YouTube, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So today, guys, we're gonna talk about Nimleria. First and foremost, this deck is kind of hard going first. Uh, with the current meta nowadays, a ton of Brandons, a ton of Labyrinths, and, a, and especially a ton of Super Heavies, this deck is hard to perform in this type of uh, lineup. So even with the trap cards, with your field spell, with your continuous spell, there's no field spell, with the continuous spell and your level 10 monsters, plus you can't use your extra deck, it's really hard for this deck to actually perform. But luckily, as I've been testing the deck out on a 60 card, on a 50 card, or even a 40 card, I think basically roughly around 40 to 45 cards, you can actually manage to make this deck work. And that is, of course, if you're using the Numeron strategy. Now, what is the Numeron strategy? Well, basically going second. Going second decks are kind of useful nowadays, especially people are creating some insane boards. Uh, so all you need to do is just basically break them on the second turn. The problem with this deck is on the second turn, you can't do an OTK. So probability here is they're going to survive one turn and they're going to smash your ass on the next turn. Um, nevertheless, so I prefer going second and then remove cards on the field and basically hope for the best that I'd survive for the turn and then I can just manage to grind the game out resourcing them. So that is my game plan here for this deck. We're just running with two copies of Jolon Lockbird, two copies of Eater Million, I was running three copies before, but I just skipped this one into just two copies because I need room for more board breakers. Three Maxis, three Ash Blossoms, one copy of Grand Maju de Aiza. I used two before, but just one is enough because you can join into this and you don't want that. If you ever drew into a copy of the Aiza and it's already the, like the grind game, you'll have a fat Aiza. Uh, one Pankratops, one copy of Fenrir. The Pankratops is just a pop, really good card. Glove of Golem removing, removing two cards. You can go for Spear Mode here, but I would just recommend the Lava Golem since it is an SR. Two Gizmic Orochi. You can run one copy of this, but this card is kind of good. Just removing cards from the top of your deck in face down. Also, it can pop a card. Uh, but it's your choice. If you have one or two copies, better just use um, either one as long as you have a copy. Two copies of the, each of the Defender here, except for a copy of the Realize, because this card is a fairy, not a beast. Shockingly enough, I really thought that this was a beast monster. So, you cannot search this one with the Dream Tower. Was this a beast in uh, Omega? I'm not sure, but the, the rest are beast monsters. So, they, they are level 10 beast monsters. The Realize is the only fairy monster, which has a really good effect though. It can add one Dream Nimleria face up in your extra deck. Also, change one face up monster on the field face down. Trap cards are basically useful for this deck as well because in case your opponent survives the second turn, basically trap cards will help you out. So, or these trap trap cards will help you out. That's why we are running 43 cards in your deck. One copy of Nibiru, the three copies of Dreaming Nimleria, plus the copy of Sweet Dreams are basically your starter here. I was running the, the thrust before, but maybe you can just r run with one thrust and then remove a copy of Lightning Storm. But Lightning Storm nowadays are pretty good, plus the Harpies for the Duster. I know this is kind of redundant, but if you want, just remove the Harpies for the Duster and go for Thrust. It's really up to you. For our pot cards, sad to say that we're just running one of each. I was running Desires before, but it was kind of hard. There are some times that the Desire removes significant cards from your deck. So better just use the effect of Extravagance and a copy of Prosperity. Two copies of your Dream Tower and that is your main deck. For your extra deck, it's basically utility, utility, utility. So you can go with level 10s. I do prefer going for some level, good level 10s, of course. If you have copies, if you have copies, that's really good. So going for a copy of Rail Cannon Gust of Max, which just needs two level 10 monsters, or going with a copy of which was a, uh, there we go. A copy of Rail Cannon Super Dora, which needs also two level 10 monsters. Then you can go into a copy of the Juggernaut Libby. Or Libe. I don't know how to pronounce that one. But yeah, you can rank up into the Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon. But these are URs, just to say, uh, guys. The other cards are basically utility, but I do prefer if you want to use Extra Deck, if you can, then go for a copy of Anima. The Nightmare Monsters are pretty good as well. Uh, just takes two or three monsters to sacrifice for a Link Summon. Of course, not really the best, but that is your options there. Phoenix, your Charmers are really good as well because the majority of your cards are Light and Darks. Yeah, that is Dark, Dark Charmer and Lightna, uh, plus the copy of Unicorn. Um, yeah, Relinquished Anima is kind of good as well if you summon a copy of your Nemleria to the field. 
But anyways, that is basically your deck profile, guys. Let's go towards the replays. I have three replays for you guys today just to showcase this deck out and even some fewer versions. But yeah, you get the point on how this deck works. It's really sucky, but here's the gameplay. All right, guys, so here we are with our first replay. And we have one Drill and Lockbird, one Gizmec Orochi, one Realize, one Dreaming Nemleria, and a copy of Dream Tower. Now, seeing from this, this is a really good hand, but we're going up against Brandon Despia. So not really the best of lineup once I saw the cards. So there we go, going for High Spirits, revealing a copy of Kartisha here, dumping a copy of Grand Gnoll, getting a copy of the Albion the Shrouded, and then I drop a copy of uh, Drill and Lockbird. So no more searching for you guy. He's gonna use the effect of Albion, dumping a copy of Blazing King, or Branded King, I mean, and it's real summoning a copy of Shrouded to the field. On his, end, on his end turn, I would like to summon Orochi and then use my pop during my turn, but he has a follow-up of the Quim to the field. So that's still really bad on my part, but regardless, it's perfectly fine. The thing about Timleria, they don't mind if you banish their cards. So uh, the more banished, the better, I think. So is uh, during my draw phase, he's going to use the effect of Brandon in red, getting a hold of a copy of Volant of Albas here, and then going for a copy of uh, Albion the Branded Dragon to the field. And with that, Albion is going to spray all summon cards, I mean into a copy of Abelion. I don't know why he did that though, banishing a copy of Albion. But yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's his choice. And they're going for a copy of Mirror Jade to the field, which of course, I'll try to pop the copy of Mirror Jade. He will banish, of course, my Mirror Jade. So at least that's one, um, you know, one card down. But I forgot the effect of Quim. He can still spell summon the monster, which of course, another Mirror Jade spawns to the field. So a little bit of a grind game for this build, of course, if you manage to like, if, you're, if your opponent survives the second turn, so it's gonna be like a grind game. So at this point, I'm going for Dreaming Nemleria, going for the, the tower, banishing two to get a hold of two level 10 monsters here. So we gotta realize the reveal, and like I said earlier, the reveal and the tower are cards that locks you out from the extra deck. So take note of that one. I was going to normal summon, uh, I am normal summon the, the Drill and Lockbird just to use the effect of Realize, but I think this guy already knows the effect of the uh, Nimleria monster, so basically he just banished my Drill and Lockbird. So with that, my only choice here is just to spell something some level 10s, and then, yeah, that's basically it. On my turn, he got a copy of Branded King, plus a copy of Albion, getting a copy of Branded Fusion to the field, which is kind of scary. Plus, cards is going to be adding back to his hand. Luckily, the protection from Bar Tower is really good, though. Uh, sadly, we didn't have a copy of, like, Kuwait to the field for a target negate. Uh, but it's still fine. So, we're having Sanctifier to the field. I just uh, used the effect of the, the, the Kuwait here. Not the Kuwait, was it? The Orieller, I mean. Sorry. So that it would increase my attack. And my guy is going to go for it attack here after he banished my Orieller. Luckily, the protection from the field spell, or the continuous spell, why I do keep on saying field spell, luckily from the protection from my continuous spell will protect my one copy of the Mleria monster. Now, the thing about this is, like I said earlier, uh, we're just basically out-resourcing our opponents here, or our, our opponent, and we got a copy of Treasure. Now, the reason why I removed this is because, you know, there's no point of putting that monster in your uh, face up in your extra deck when you can't even search out your other level 10 so might as well I'm just gonna remove it and add some significant cards like any board breakers but yeah i'm gonna use the effect of realize flipping one card face down but our guy is gonna use the effect to negate plus my tower is gonna be immediately negated luckily i have a second tower so all is good and yeah i only have one monster in my extra deck which i can just use by dreaming them to the field so to the field, and that's basically it. But regardless, seven cards were banished, of course, and returning seven cards back to my extra deck, just for protection, of course, from the tower. So that's still pretty good. And go for battle. Now the reason why we always get, of course, uh, did I remove a copy of my... We don't have any sweet dreams, so there's no way that I can return back a Dreaming Nemleria, so... That's one downside there. Keep note of that one. 
So our guy is going to get a copy of Brand Infusion or use the effect of Brand Infusion that he got earlier, going for Lobelion and then going for Alba Lenitus, dumping a copy of Tragedy to the graveyard. So at this point, we are unprotected because the Dream Tower needs a face-up the Malaria in our extra deck here. So at this, it's not really like a big issue because uh, once he destroys our Dreaming Nimleria, we can still do the thing though. Our guy is normal summon the Alibur getting a copy of Loss and at this point on, he's out of resources here. So typically, he has some choices on what to do. So Alibur just rams into a copy of my Realize. I don't know why he did that. And then he starts attacking all of my monsters. And then finally, my Dreaming Nimleria face up the field. And there we go. We protected our last card, or our second to the last card, which of course, we just ended the turn on the 6th. So, it was a long grind game for this build, uh, but yeah, we managed to pull it off. Really good against Branded Despias of all, of all things. So, that's game number 1, boys and girls. Let's go for game number 2. Alright guys, so here we are with game number 2, and this is my earliest versions for the deck as well. So, one Drill Lockbird, Grand Maju, the Aiza, one Triple Tactics Salad, one Brothers Bond of Prosperity, and a copy of Triple Tactics Thrust. Now, like I said earlier, this was the earliest build where two Aizas and one Thrust were in this build. So, yeah. Really fun. So, our guy is going to thrill summon Unicorn into the field, getting a copy of Theosis. Luckily, we have one Drill Lockbird that was unnegated. And our guy just banished a copy of Jaglubia, thinking this was a level 8 deck. So, we're good. We are good. And then he spells up in a copy of Ryzart here, and then using the effect of birth, this guy was stacked. So, typically. And then he spells up in Defender from the banished pile into the field, and going for the 3 material Ryzart. Now, like I said, Nemleria is not afraid if you banish cards. That would actually benefit them, especially against Kashira. The only fear that I have here is the Unicorn because it can banish the Dreaming Nemleria even if it's face up in the extra deck. So there we go. We used the mech of Prosperity here. I should have, uh, I shouldn't have done that to be honest. Maybe I should have gone with a copy of uh, Sweet Dreams here. But regardless, we did it anyways. Uh, should have gone. The thing should have, I, that I should have done is go for a copy of Sweet Dreams, because, but I was afraid that it would get ashed, of course. That's why I triggered uh, most of the cards first before going in, into the Sweet Dreams. But yeah, Prosperity was actually done. Doesn't really matter. Dribble Tactics Talent want to control the monster. He banished his monsters. And the Pendulum Treasure, why I removed it? Because it was typically useless. So our guy is going to dump a copy of Maxi, hurrah, okay, okay, Sweet Dreams is going to be activating, getting a copy of Dreaming Nimleria, Dreaming Nimleria will get a tower, tower will get two level 10s, special summon two of the level 10s, and then normal summoning our Grandma Judy Aiza with 17 banished materials. Boom. So our guy was afraid of those cards, and I can't even do an OTK. So that is game number two. Let's go for game number three. All right, guys. So here we are with our last game. And this is my, I think this was my, or this is my recent game, of course, and with the updated ones. So we have one Orealer, one Harpies, one Lightning Storm, one Prosperity, and a copy of Repeater. So our guy is going first, of course. And this is Sword Soul. So yeah, I'm just allowing him to do stuff. I really thought that he has a copy of another War Monster on hand. But basically, he has more trap cards than monsters. So, three cards face down <laughs> with a heart beast on my hand. So, during our turn, we got a copy of Extravagance. Hurrah! Go for Extravagance. Our guy is going to dump a copy of Ash here, negating it. So, at least, wow, that's still okay, I think. Because we have Prosperity, but we can't do an OTK. Go for Harpies for the Duster, popping all the three cards, and then going for Lightning Storm next. So at this point, our field is free, but like I said, Prosperity will actually save him. But nevertheless, he can be saved because, you know, this deck can't do an OTK unless you have the best cards on hand. Best cards on hand. So going for Sweet Dreams, getting a copy of Dreaming Nemleria. Dreaming Nemleria is going to be activated. Who can stop me? Getting the copy of the tower. So take note, if your uh, tower is going to be going to be ashed, or your Sweet Dreams is going to be Ash, then eh, it's going to be bad for you. 
<laughs> like I said, it's really hard for this deck to perform. So 2-5 plus 2k plus a def plus a trap card, it's still really good. Protection, protection, also for the, from the Kuwait. But our guy bricked on one card. So all I need is one monster, which is that one. So that is the game. Quick enough, of course, going second. Really fun. Uh, but yeah, this deck needs a little bit more testing, of course, or and experimentation. But I had fun with this deck going second, just removing most of their boss monsters in the field. Anyways, guys, that is the replay, or those are the, the replays, and that is the deck profile for you guys today. Hope you enjoy this kind of content. Like and subscribe for more contents like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.